Hello everyone. Welcome to the next training session of SAP FICO module. Today's topic for training is foreign exchange. Where we'll be studying about how the foreign exchange transactions are done in the SAP system where there are different foreign currencies been involved and how those particular transactions are done and those transactions are reflected in the foreign currencies at the same time in the company's local currency as well. And even we can calculate the gain or loss due to the foreign exchange fluctuation to an organization. So the transactions which are posted in currency other than the company's local currency is what is termed as foreign exchange or foreign transactions. In SAP an exchange rate has to be maintained for that. In some companies the exchange rate are maintained on a daily basis. In certain companies the exchange rates are maintained at weekly or monthly basis as well. It depends upon the company to company what kind of a transactions and how much volume of transactions they have in foreign currencies and accordingly those call is taken that when to maintain the exchange rate and how to maintain that. So the foreign currency transactions are denomination in a currency other than the company's local currency. The foreign currency transactions may result in receivables or payables fixed in the amount of foreign currency to be paid or received. A foreign currency transaction requires settling settlement in a currency other than the company's local currency. That means you need a foreign currency for settlement of your account in which you are dealing with and a change in the exchange rate between the local currency and that of the foreign currency in which a transaction is denominated increases or decreases and this change of increase or decrease raised to the foreign currency gain or loss to an organization that typically is involved or included in arriving at earnings in the income statement. So whenever there is a impact of gain or loss due to the foreign transactions obviously it will impact the earnings in the income statement for that particular period as well due to the exchange rate fluctuations. So, and in today's world, in today's era, generation, the businesses involved in international trade often execute a sale or purchase at one point, but the transfer of fund that take place at a different point of time. Whenever we go for a foreign transactions, there are agreements where the payments are done at a later date that could be around two months after the delivery or even 90 days of payment term. So it depends what kind of a payment terms that two companies have regarding the payment system. So due to the payments are made at a later date, this results in an uncertainty about the amount of revenue or expenditures involved in the transaction in the business. Let's take a practical scenario. Suppose a US company sells electrical equipment to a buyer in India for suppose $10,000. The equipment is to be delivered in 90 days before payment is made. So whenever the delivery will be made, the payment will be made after 90 days of the delivery. Now at the time of the sale agreement which was made between the parties was made uh, at that point of time the exchange rate was 
रुपीज सिक्सटी पर डॉलर विच मीन्स वन डॉलर इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटी रुपीज दिस मीन दैट द कंपनी वॉज काउंटिंग अ रेवेन्यू ऑफ अराउंड टेन थाउजेंड डॉलर इन टू सिक्सटी रुपीज दैट इज इक्वल टू सिक्स हंड्रेड थाउजेंड रुपीज नाउ सपोज द यूएस कंपनीज कॉस्ट फॉर प्रोडक्शन एंड डिलीवरिंग द इक्विपमेंट वॉज अराउंड नाइन थाउजेंड डॉलर दैट मेक्स नाइन थाउजेंड डॉलर इन टू सिक्सटी रुपीज इज इक्वल टू अराउंड फाइव हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी थाउजेंड डॉलर रुपीज एंड इफ यू कैलकुलेट इट इट मेक्स अ प्रॉफिट ऑफ अराउंड वन थाउजेंड डॉलर टू दी company who is selling the equipments which is equal to around 60000 rupees in the inr currency that is the indian currency on the transaction however if the value of the rupee falls suppose after 3 months the payment has to be made that is 90 days and by that time suppose the rupees currency gets devaluated and it falls to 55 rupees per dollar against 60 rupees per dollar so there is a loss of 5 rupees per dollar which makes it around to 50000 rupees or you can say it is approx to around 910 dollars so that is a kind of a loss to that organization who is selling the electrical equipment and you can see now that there is a huge loss to that company there is a sizable amount of loss within this particular transaction and it is hardly making any profit on this particular sale of electrical equipment so these kind of a changes in the currencies in the foreign currencies does make impact on the income statement as we have seen with this particular practical scenario so there could be number of different scenarios in such kinds which happens and in today's present time the currencies are fluctuating at a much faster rate than it was used to as earlier with every economic slowdown scenario recession in the european countries the currencies keep on changing and fluctuating at a very fast rate so the foreign currency or transaction risk is the risk that is consequence of the fluctuation of exchange rate it can strongly affect businesses in a variety of ways even if a company does not engage in foreign sale or purchases it can still be subject to a risk because of exchange rate fluctuations so that is why the exchange rate plays a very important role in any organization in today's world that is why having this foreign exchange customized in the sap system again makes it a very important point so we'll be doing the exchange rate customization or the configuration into the sap system and the system will show you just with the execution of a report that what is the kind of a profit or loss a company is incurred due to the fluctuation of the foreign currencies in sap so moving to the configuration step now we have divided the configuration in two parts the first part of the configuration is you can say is that as basic configuration step which will involve only that we can make the transactions into the sap in foreign currencies which will also reflect you in the local companies currency as well and the cost, uh, configuration steps are first is to check the exchange rate type 
second then we will be maintaining the translation ratio and third maintain the exchange rate so we'll moving to this basic customizations one by one so we can move to this check exchange rate type so the menu path is in, on your screen let's check with the sap system how to move so moving on to the path i have to go to the img that is the reference img then sap net weaver and then the currencies and check exchange rate types so moving to the sap screen we first need to execute the transaction spro enter then we need to go to sap reference img and in this you can see over here there is an option of sap net weaver so we need to expand this part over here and in this particular part you can see that the currencies and then check exchange rate currencies so there is a one particular step missing first we need to go to sap net weaver and then we need to go to general settings and then we'll be moving to the currencies over here so better make the correction over here on the screen so first the sap net weaver then the general settings and then to the currencies and then check exchange rate types so general settings currencies now we need to expand this currency part over here and then you can see over here check exchange rate types now executing this particular step now what we need to check in this particular configuration step because the step itself says check exchange rate types so the check exchange rate types in the sap system in this sap has already provided different exchange rate types within the software as per the standard requirement from country to country we can use those rate types and we'll be discussing what are those rate types which has to be maintained and that is what we have to check whether those exchange types have been maintained into the system or not if they are maintained that's well and good as per the standard if it is in provided else we need to create it so the, there are three main or you can say the important rate types that are there in sap which is provided by the sap itself so they are one is termed as the exchange rate type b that is standard transact translation at bank selling rate this particular rate is also known as bank selling rate the another one is g which is known as the bank buying rate so over here you can name it if there is any space left so probably bank selling rate so that is what we have expanded it to so one is b that refers to the bank selling rate which is a standard transaction again the next is g which is a bank buying rate so one is a foreign exchange selling rate one is a foreign exchange buying rate and one more is there which is termed as m in this which is termed as average rate so these are the three rates which has to be there in the system which you have to check when posting and clearing documents which involve foreign currencies the system uses the exchange rate m that is the this one for foreign currency translation this exchange rate type 
must be contained in the SAP system. That is why we need to check this. So they are there. That's why we don't have to create it. Else we had to create it with the new entry options on the screen. So make sure that the exchange rate type B G and M are defined under this particular step check exchange rate type. So once we have checked we can save the entry. If there is any changes will be saved with the particular request. So that is what we are done with the first configuration step where we had to check just only the exchange rate type that is B, G and M. B represents bank selling rate, G represents bank buying rate and M represents average rate. Now moving to the next configuration step. So the next step is in this step we have to define the translation ratio for each currency pair for which we want to take up the foreign exchange transactions. For example, we want to do the foreign exchange transactions with India. So we have to maintain the translation ratio of dollars to the Indian currency so that the system will allow you to convert the currencies in the SAP system while posting the transactions. So let's move to this particular configuration step again. So in this we need to go to define translation ratios for currency translation. So you can find over here the very next step next to check exchange rate type is define translation ratios for currency translation. So in the present case it is the US dollar against the Indian rupees which we have to maintain. So we can go and we can execute this step now. So while executing this step you can see on the screen the system asks you it gives you a warning message making changes to the table of transact translation factors may cause unwanted inconsistencies in your system. If you cannot avoid having to make changes while the system is in production operation it is essential that you read the following information. Still do you want to continue? So we have to click on to yes. So once we click on to yes it will take you to the next screen. So once we have moved to the next screen now we will move to the new entry part on the screen. So once we click on to the new entries here you need to assign the exchange rate type which we have just checked in the last configuration step. So the exchange rate type will be one is B, the another was G and the another was, was B. B represents for the selling rate, G represents to buying rate and M represents to the average rate. So it is what we have taken these three exchange rate types against which we will be maintaining the translation ratio of dollars to the Indian rupees that is INR. So we'll take from in the from column we'll put the US dollar. And in the two column we'll take INR. And then we need to assign the valid from date. This date will decide from when this particular translation ratios will be effective. So we'll be taking this particular step from the very beginning of the financial year that is 2014. So that it will be April 1st 2014 
as we are in the 2014 fiscal year. Now, the next part is we need to maintain the ratio from and to. The ratio which has to be maintained is 1 is to 1. So, 1 dollar is equal to 1 INR has to be maintained on the system in this screen over here. So this is what you have to take care that you need to maintain these things and do take care that once we follow one conversion factor that is over here we have taken 1 is to 1 as a conversion factor we follow continuously for the same conversion ratio for years don't change in between it gives wrong results or it may raise to inconsistencies as well. So conversion factors are given at client level as well. So you have to take care if you change anything it will change the conversion ratio not only for your company but for all the companies that are configured in that particular client. So once it is changed it is changed for the company code it is changed for the client, client as well. Because we are working on a particular client and one client can have n number of company codes. So when it is effective on the company, on the client level, that means it is effective for all the company codes. That is why we suggest not to change the ratios again and again, else it can give you inconsistencies in the system. So once we have done this customization on the screen, now we can save this screen over here. And once it will be saved, it will be taken up in the request. So this is what how you need to assign your exchange translation rates or the ratios. Now moving to the next is the maintaining the exchange rate. Now maintaining the exchange rate is also known as called the forex table we can enter foreign exchange rates daily basis weekly monthly for each different exchange rate types that we have created or we have checked with we can enter only one rate in a day you cannot maintain different rates in one particular day at a time for a particular day one particular rate can be maintained but yes on a daily basis you can have different rates defined into the system so moving to this particular step again we need to go back to the path now in that you can see the very next configuration step is exchange enter exchange rate so let's execute this particular step and then we'll discuss about the different options in it. So this is the screen. The exchange rate are required. Few of the things which you have to take care. First, translate foreign currency amounts when posting or clearing or to check an exchange rate entered manually. Determines the gain and loss from exchange rate differences. So whatever the rate you maintain over here depending upon that the system calculates the gain or loss from the exchange rate differences. And the rate which we will be maintaining on the screen now will be the rate on as per which the different foreign exchange transactions will take place or will be posted into the SAP system. So let's move to assign the exchange rate on the system. So here we'll be maintaining the rate of dollar to the Indian rupees as on a particular date. So let's we have started with the fiscal restart we have taken the conversion ratio as on fiscal year start so we'll be maintaining the race, the exchange rate over here as on the fiscal year starting so for that we need to go to the position over here 
Now we'll be maintaining the rate for all the three exchange rate type that we have seen. One was B, the another was G and M. So first taking a B, we have to take over here the exchange rate as B. Or even if you want, you can search that from the search option. So in this, you can search further down the line. You will find that B is there, that's bank selling ratio. G is also there and M is also there. So first we'll be taking B. Once we have taken B, now we have to take from and to. So the from currency is USD. The two currency is INR, that is the Indian rupees. And then we have to take the valid from date as well. If you want to take the date, it's okay. Else you can you can leave it blank as well. So let's take it blank. Now we can enter on the screen. So once you enter, the system shows you that there is no USD to INR currencies maintained as of now in the system. You can see. This is USD to JPY, that is Japanese currency, European countries, currency is there. So there is no dollar to INR currency maintained. So how, what to do then to maintain it? We need to go to new entries. In this we are we'll assigning the exchange rate as B. Valid from date will be April 1st, 2014. Then we'll be maintaining from as USD and 2 as INR. Now in this particular part we have to maintain the rate as well. So the rate we will be we have to maintain in the direct quotation part. So suppose with the rate which we are taking up is 60 rupees per dollar. So this is the rate which we have maintained for B Similarly, we'll be maintaining the rate for G and M. So let's take the different rates. Suppose the buying rate is, sorry, the selling rate is 60. So obviously the buying rate should be lesser. That suppose we take it as 58. And the average rate will be come out in between is the average of buying and selling is equal to 59. Or even if you want, you can take this as 60 as US. So over here it will be INR and INR. So we have maintained the currency over here on the screen for you. B, G and M, USD to INR and the rate which has been maintained is 60 rupees per dollar, 58 rupees for selling for buying rate is 58 rupees per dollar and the medium rate is now is 60 or you can take it as 59 rupees per dollar. So this is how you need to maintain the exchange rate, exchange rate for the foreign currency on the screen. So once this has been maintained, we will be, we need to save this so that the rates will be saved on the screen. So the data was saved. Now we can move back. So once we have maintained the rate, even if you want, now you can search it again. So you can go to position and you can take your exchange rate type, type as B from currency is USD and two currencies INR and once we click enter in this case now you will see that now it has been reflected on the screen to you. Earlier it was not there that's why it was uh, there was no currency been reflected but now it has been maintained in the system. So this is how you will be maintaining the these basic customization steps. So once we have done with this we'll move to the unit testing part and in the unit testing, we'll be posting two different of transactions, two types of transactions, so as to identify that our testing is okay or not. So one we will be doing is 
posting is when exchange date is not entered at the time of posting the document. That means we'll see that how the system automatically takes the rates which we have just maintained in the last configuration step that is the maintaining exchange rate. And the another case which we will be doing is when the exchange rate is entered manually at the time of posting the document. So they are both the options if you want the system to take automatically the assigned rate from the exchange rate that can be done and otherwise you can you can manually enter the rate as well. So we'll first check when exchange rate is not entered at the time of posting the document. So moving on to the first case before that let's move on and again maintain one more exchange rate with the transaction code OB08. So moving on to OB08 now as said that uh, <coughs> or probably I have not said that yet so the system uses the trans transaction type M for exchange rates for foreign currency translations when posting and clearing documents in the activity. So whenever we do any postings, any transaction into the SAP system, the SAP system takes the M transaction type that is the average currency rate for posting the transaction. So the average currency rate is taken up for converting the currency to the local currency in the SAP system. That is why an entry must exist in the system for this exchange rate type that is M so that we can post the transaction. So we'll move to the position again over here and we'll take the exchange rate type as M. Mind it the exchange rate type M is very important. You maintain the B or G part or not but you have to maintain the exchange rate type M. The currency USD to INR enter. So you can see now that there is one already maintained but now this is on 1st of April. Now I want my exchange rate have changed for the month of May. So I want a different rate to be maintained but I don't want the April rate to be deleted or to be taken off from the system. I want the same rate to be maintained but at the same time a new rate to be maintained for the next month as well. So what we can do is we can select this from here and copy over here. So once we copy we will change the date over here on the screen and we can change the rate whichever is applicable. So suppose the rate applicable now is 62. So in a month the currency's average rate has moved from 59 to 62. So we have maintained this particular rate and now we can save this screen. So now you can see on the screen that now there are two rates maintained for April 59 rupees per dollar and in May 62 rupees for every dollar. So now we can post a transaction in the month of April and when we post the transaction before 1st of May the exchange rate will be taken by the system as 59 for the transaction. But if we post the any of the transactions from 1st May onwards the system will start taking the exchange rate as 62 rupees per dollar. So that is what we need to check and have to test as well. So let's move to the unit testing part and we'll be posting certain transactions. So let's move to FB50 transaction. We need to take the document date. So the document date we'll be taking is 0104 2012 sorry 14 that is April 1. 
as we have maintained it from them so we would like to try that first but here now the currency has to be changed why because our currency the company's local currency is already usd dollar so we need to take is the foreign currency so the foreign currency is inr so we'll be taking inr on the screen then we will be moving to assign the gl so let's take the gl from the screen So what I am taking up is suppose I take it as salaries and on the another side I take it take a bank account for making the payment of salary. So I have taken Citibank. So salary will be debited and the Citibank will be credited and here we'll be taking the amount in local currency in the document currency so suppose i take the amount as 10000 or let's take it as 30000 inr currency as you can see now so you can see now that as we entered on the screen this document currency that is the INR currency 30,000 INR has been converted to the local currency of the company in this that is 50847 means 508 dollar 47 cent so this has been done with the help of that exchange rate which we have just maintained so you can check with that if you multiply $508.47 into the exchange rate that was 59 rupee or you can say 59 INR you will get the same 30,000 INR over here on the screen. So this is what has been maintained. Now moving next to we can maintain the business area and now we can move to simulate the transaction. And once we simulate, you can see over here on the screen that it has still been reflected in the INR that is the foreign currency and the foreign currency over here has been mentioned as INR as well. So now we can move and we can post this transaction. So once we posted, the document has been generated on the screen to you. And now if we want to display this document, we can move on to the screen over here and we can display it. So once we display the document on the screen, you can see the original document reflects is the foreign currency INR and this is $30,000 INR transaction has been posted. But now I want to see my document in my currency and my currency or my country or my company code currency is dollar. So to check those transactions in your own currency, you need to go to this tab over here display change currency so once you click on this part the system will change it and it will show you in your country currency so you can see now your currency the foreign currency is still INR but the currency has been changed to your local currency and it is now US dollars so it has been reflected to you in dollar part So this is how the transactions are done in the system. So the document has been posted. We have checked the document as well on the screen. From INR to dollars. And this is how you have to do it. So this was the case when exchange rate is entered sorry exchange rate is and is not entered at the time of posting so we didn't enter the exchange rate on the screen over here we just put the foreign currency and the foreign amount which has been paid that's it and the another case could be that 
you can enter your own currency rate manually in the system so for that case we need to go to a different transaction so moving to the second case we need to execute a different transaction code which is also known as a substitute of the transaction f-50 the next transaction is f-02 so that is what we need to execute on the screen now f-02 enter so in this screen now we need to take the document date suppose I take the document date as April 5th April 5th 2014 and the document date has to be the same now over here in this case I would be changing the currency to the foreign currency and the foreign currency supposes INR and the rate of INR is suppose I am now manually changing the rate the rate which we have maintained in the SAP system is 59 but now I will be posting it as 56 I want the system to post this particular transaction with the exchange rate of 56 so how it will be done so that is what you can you can assign the manual rate on the screen over here that what rate this particular transaction should take for making the transaction in the system so the exchange rate will be will be taken over here for INR to dollar is 56 INR to one particular dollar one dollar so when you enter on the screen or we can move down over here we can take the posting key now on the screen so for assigning the GL we need to go to search options of the GL list so now we can move and we can select again now suppose I am taking rent this time and once I have taken the rent over here now I have to enter so as to move to the next screen where I will decide what amount of rent I would be paying it so once I entered the system asked me for a warning again you can enter it to move so once I entered again you can see the system exchange rate 56 deviates from table rate 59 by 194.92 percent so the system gives you a warning message that the rate which you have maintained over here is not the one which has been maintained in the table so and it shows even that the rate maintained in the table is not 56 but 59 and suppose still you want to overrule that rate and you want to post a transaction with the rate of 56 now you can enter on the screen so once you enter it gives you an error message this error message is something which we have to look for because the error should not be there so it says maintain translation ratio for INR to USD so the translation ratio was the configuration step which we did over here a couple of steps back so we first have to revisit this because we have not maintained the translation ratio of INR to USD we have maintained for USD to INR so now we have to maintain IR INR to USD as well so the transaction code is there OBBS so we can execute the transaction slash O OBBS enter now yes so now we need to go to new entries again we will be taking the exchange rate type B G and M from and to now the from and to will change because we are taking it as indirect now not direct so the indirect will be INR okay USD so this is what we have maintained as of now earlier we have maintained for USD to INR now we have maintained INR to USD and the ratio will be 1 to 1 so this has been maintained now we can save this screen so once the rate has been maintained we can now move again to the transaction 
so now we can again go for the transaction posting and you can now see again the warning message have been reflected to you now you can enter on the screen so once we enter it takes you to the next part next particular page so over here we'll be putting the amount of uh, rent which we will be paying so we this particular ledger belongs to rent so over here we need to put the rent amount so suppose i am paying a rent of around 20 thousand INR now moving down you can put the text over here as well rent for April and then we'll move to the next line item so the next line item will be 5050 for crediting the GL now in this case we can select a bank so as to make the payment of rent so now again I am selecting the Citibank on this particular part. Then we can again enter on the screen. So it took you to the next screen again. So that was earlier amount was for debiting the GL of rent and now it will be crediting the bank GL. So we here now again will be putting 20,000 INR. And now we can put the text over here again as uh, rent for April. So once this has been done, we have taken the posting key 40 for debiting the GL and the posting key 50 for crediting the GL. Now we can move on to this particular document on the top and we can simulate the document. So once you simulate it, it shows you the document on the screen. Now you can see that the document date is 4th of April. The INR is this sorry the company code is 1200 the currency is INR and the rate maintained is 56 which has been maintained manually so now we can move on even if you want to check the currency now this is INR 20,000 dollars 20,000 rupee or you can say 20,000 INR currency if you want to see this in dollar part so you need to go for that over here on the option display currency so once you display on it, it will take this particular amount to the dollar terms. So you can see now it has been converted to the dollar terms as this much. So if you find that this document is okay, now we can go and we can post this particular document on the screen. So it asks you for the business area. Okay, we need to double click onto the first line item and we need to maintain the depth business area on the screen over here so once we have maintained entered now we can go and we can save this document so now you can see the document number has been generated on your screen so this is how the second case has been done in the first case the system automatically took the currency value from the exchange rate which we have maintained and in the second part we defined the manual exchange rate and that is what the system has taken in for posting the transaction even if you want to check this particular document again you can either go for this document and display or the another option could be you can go to transaction fb03 enter that is display document this is the document number company code enter so you can see the document has been reflected over here to you again and if you want to see it in the dollar part you can click on to display currency it will show you in the dollar terms as well so this is how the these two particular two uh, cases have been dealt with the one was posting without and one is posting with so this is how we have done the transaction and whatever the transactions we have done we have done in the month of April we have not done in the month of May so the exchange rate which have been taken is belongs to the month of April that is uh, uh, the one which we have maintained for the month of April that was around 59 59 INR or rupees per dollar so this is what we have covered with the first part similarly the 
vendor invoice or the vendor or the payment are done in different foreign currencies. You want to check the balances. You can go for FBIL 3N and we can check the balances as well for the currencies. FBIL 3N. Enter. So we can select the bank GL over here because from the both the transactions have been done with the help of the bank, city bank only processed. So we can take this and it can execute the report. So in this you can now see that the two transactions which we have just processed one was this much and another was this. So even if you want to see the this is the amount in local currency. Local currency means you will get the amount over here in the dollar terms. If you want to see the amount in your in the foreign currency in that case you need to go to change layout over here on the screen and in that you need to select this over in this part as uh, the amount so let me so over here you need to select this amount in document currency so once you select this amount in document currency the amount will be reflected to you in that part so that will be one and let me check the document currency as well So we can take this document currency as well. So once we do it OK. So you can see now that these are the two transactions which have been posted in a foreign currency that is INR. 30,000 INR and 20,000 INR as on your screen. So these are the two different transactions reflected. So this is how you need to process your foreign exchange transactions into the system. So this was the simplest part which we have done in the SAP system. Similarly, you can post a vendor invoice. Let's move and post a vendor invoice in the foreign currency. So for that, we need to go to the transaction FB60. We need to select a vendor. Then we need to take a invoice date. So suppose I take the invoice date as 15th May 15th 2015 sorry this will be 14 you can take the reference number then you can take the amount over here and I will be taking the foreign currency not the document currency I will be taking a foreign currency is INR then we need to take the text let's take it as import and we need to take the GL over here. So I have taken the GL, the amount. I need to take the business area as well. So I have taken the business area. Now once we have taken these things, we can go and we can simulate the document. Enter. Okay, the vendor is I think have taken wrong. So let's select the vendor once again with the search options so the vendor which will be taking up right now is suppose the first one a b b and we can simulate the document again there is an advance the message enter so you can see this is the document which have been generated on your screen onto the system and if you find it to be okay we can post it so you can see over here the currency is INR that is the foreign currency for 10,000 INR. Now we can go and we can post this document. So once it will be posted a document number has been generated on your screen. So we can go and we can display this document with display option over here. So once the document has been displayed you can see that the original document is posted in INR. But yet, if you want to see this document in your local currency, that is in your in the company's local currency, then we can move on to this display currency over here and we can click on to that. So it shows you the document in the dollar terms. So the 10,000 INR currency is equal to 
$161.29 in the dollar terms. So this is how your vendor invoice has been booked. So once the vendor invoice has been booked, now we can move to the next part that is the vendor payment. So let's make the payment also in a foreign currency. F-58 enter. So we need to take the details over here which is the company code. Payment term is C, House Bank City, check lot is 1, then the printer is LP01 and the advice printer is also LP01. So now we can move to enter payment. We need to take the amount over here. So the amount which we will take is, we will be taking the document date over here. So the document date which we will be taking now is suppose May 30th because the invoice was posted on May 15th. So I am taking off, making a payment after 15 days that is May 13th 2014. So we will be taking a foreign currency over here. If you want you can maintain your manual rate as well on the screen on this very next tab. But I will not be maintaining. I want the system to pick the rates. That is what the standard and the the good practice. This is not the practice to be done as to do a manual manual assignment of rates. That should not be suggested as a consultant to anyone. The standard option is to go and maintain the exchange rate and that rate should be picked up over here in the currency part. So moving to the amount, the amount will be 10,000. The rate, the business area has been taken. Now we have to take the value rate date also over here. So the value date has been taken. We can take the text. So in that we can take it as a payment to import vendor. And we can select the vendor over here now. So the vendor was this one we have selected. If you don't know you can go and you can search the options and you can select the vendor with the list of vendors. So moving to process open item. So once we clicked onto the process open item you can see the list of all the invoices have been displayed on your screen. So we can now deselect this highlighted part over here on the screen. For that we need to go to the third third from the left that is select all and then third from the right that is deactivate items. So you can see now all has been deactivated. And now the document which I want to take for the payment to be done, I can select that. So the document which I have posted is uh, this one that is US Gross. So this was the document which I have just posted a while back and will be making a payment for that only. So now the payment which will be done in this case is now has to be done in the local currency as it seems because it is taking the dollar you, you can see over on the on the screen over here USD gross so probably the payment has to be done in the dollar terms only not in the INR system will not allow the INR part so we need to go to the screen and we have to change the amount over here double click on it and let's change the amount put the star so that the system will take the amount of its own and then we can go back to process open items and now we can see that the amount has been assigned to each other and it is equal to zero so that's what has to be taken now we can go and we can simulate this document we can we need to go to the top at the document and then to simulate so once you simulate the document you can see now on the screen that the currency is the invoice was of $161.29 and the payment is also made of that much. And the currency is the local currency of the company. So the payment cannot be made in the foreign currency. It has to be made in the local currency only. So once this has been done, you can go and you can post a document. And the document has been posted on the screen. You can see the document number. So this is how the payment has been processed. Now if you want to see the vendor line item that is the vendor ledger account you can have a look FBL 
1 and enter so we have done the payment so that's why now you will not find those that particular invoice in the open item part that will be reflected to you in the cleared item so you need to click onto the cleared item over here and then you need to execute the tab so once we execute you will find your document this is it this is the document as selected so these are those two document one KR document type represents the vendor invoice and KZ represents the vendor payment so the payment has been done and the open item has been got cleared with the payment document that is it and that is the payment document so this is how your basic foreign exchange customization has been done in the system now how to reevaluate that will be doing in the next training session where we'll be looking after how the revaluation of currencies can be done so as to know the gain or loss to the organization due to the fluctuations in the foreign currencies so we'll see you in the next training session till then you can go through this basic part and you can even do the unit testing as we have completed the basic foreign exchange part so see you then thank you